What I'd like to do today is discuss uh, how Budget 2018 will take the first steps towards the Coalition Government's plan for a transformation of the New Zealand economy. This is a transformation to an economy that is more productive, more sustainable and more inclusive. In essence, a modern economy better equipped to take on the opportunities and meet the challenges of a rapidly changing world. As David said, 187 days, six months into our work, I'm pleased with the progress that we're making. We came into government with a clear and different set of priorities. We immediately set about implementing our plan to support more New Zealanders to have a share in our country's prosperity. There is no doubt that the high level indicators of the New Zealand economy have been and are strong. But despite the economic growth that we've seen in recent years, many Kiwis have not seen the improvement in their living standards that they would like. In fact, far too many of our people have been left out of the benefits of economic growth. And one of the main features of the election campaign last year was the growing level of inequality in our society. And whether I was in a smoko room at a factory or a boardroom at Westpac, I heard similar concerns. And that is that no New Zealander is comfortable with levels of homelessness that the OECD call the highest in the world, or with children growing up in cold, damp houses. There's nobody who's comfortable with that. No New Zealander is comfortable knowing that there are people who aren't able to house their families, or who can't put food on the table. That's not the New Zealand we all believe in, and we have made it our first priority to set about righting that wrong. So it was our first action in government to reverse the previous government's tax cuts and reinvest that money in supporting low and middle income families. Our families package delivered just before Christmas will see about $5.5 billion over the next four years focused on improving the living standards of those who need it the most. Through our mini budget package in December, we introduced that package, which when fully rolled out in 2021, will see 384,000 families with children better off by an average of $75 per week, and many hard working lower income families receiving more. Our winter energy payment will support superannuitants and recipients of main benefits with their energy costs. In addition, in the package, we extended paid parental leave. We've increased the minimum wage to $16.50 an hour from the 1st of April, and it will rise in phases to $20 an hour by 2021. The Healthy Homes Guarantee Act will mean that all rentals are warm and dry. That isn't just a housing policy, it's a health policy and an economic one. And in our mini budget before Christmas, we allocated $2 billion for our ambitious Kiwi Build program to build 100,000 long overdue affordable houses across the country with 50,000 of them here in Auckland. We also fully funded the first year of our fees-free post-secondary education and training policy. We established our tax working group to look at ways to improve the fairness and balance of our tax system and shift investment towards the productive economy. We restarted payments to the New Zealand Superannuation Fund after no contributions since 2009. The Prime Minister introduced her Child Poverty Reduction Bill to set the targets and measures to achieve a significant and sustained reduction in child po poverty. And we began setting up an independent climate commission to begin the work on the goal of a net zero emissions economy by 2050. All of that just in the mini budget before Christmas. No wonder I needed a break at Christmas time. It represented the first steps of a plan that will be rolled out over the next three years by the coalition government. This is a plan for a stronger and fairer economy. A modern economy that's fit for purpose for our children and our grandchildren. A, an economy with a plan to transition to, to being more productive, more sustainable and more inclusive and which is continually focused on improving the living standards and well-being of all New Zealanders. This will require a different approach, with different priorities and different measures of success. And Budget 2018 will take the next important and crucial steps in rolling out that plan. It will focus on laying the foundations required to rebuild the critical physical and social infrastructure in New Zealand. We've come into office after 10 years of a government that demanded public services do more with less. Now that sounds great in theory, 
But in reality, as we've seen in many cases, the result was unfunded critical public services who were doing less with less. I don't want to dwell on the past today, but you can all see the scale of the challenge and the examples, for instance, of urgent capital needs in our hospitals. The same can be seen in our ageing school classrooms, 40 years old on average, and the failure of the previous government to plan for population growth in the education system, or indeed the failure to address that multi-million dollar funding gap for Auckland's transport problems, or make the decisions necessary to complete Christchurch's rebuild on time and on budget. The scale of the challenge is large, but we have a plan to deal with it. We will not make up for nine years of neglect in one budget. Our commitments are for three years of government and beyond. This does mean that some things will be phased or will not start until next year. But the commitments of our coalition and confidence and supply agreements and in the speech from the throne stand and will stand in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a better balance in our economy, to reflect the desires of New Zealanders to live up to our values and principles of fairness and equality of opportunity. Dealing with these issues is an essential part of future-proofing the economy. We have to build the strong foundations that give each and every New Zealander the chance to succeed. That's why Budget 2018 has the rebuilding of critical public services at its core. Health and education will get long overdue boosts to their capital and operating funding to deal with the cost pressures and ensure that our hospitals and schools are fit for purpose. Housing initiatives will receive a boost on top of the $2 billion we announced in the December mini-budget for KiwiBuild. These plans, along with the families package which lifts children out of poverty and reduces inequality, are the bedrock of a more inclusive economy. Budget 2018 will also reflect the plan we have to transform the New Zealand economy to be more productive and more sustainable. We simply cannot rely on increasing our population, exporting raw commodities and an overheated housing market to drive our economic growth. Our globally poor labour productivity is holding us back. To transform our economy, we have to work smarter. We're going to build on the work of Labor's Future of Work Commission to ensure that we can face the future with confidence, built on a resilient and adaptable economy. The investment that we have already made in education and training in the MIDI budget is critical to that. Adding to that, the Minister for Science and Innovation and I recently announced that we will reintroduce a research and development tax incentive to lift our investment in innovation. We have committed through our coalition agreement to lifting our R&D investment to 2% of GDP inside 10 years. That represents a 50% increase in R&D spending. We are well below the OECD average for that at the moment. We must do better and we do have an ambitious plan to achieve that. We will also continue to put resources into ensuring that New Zealand is in the best position to push for and benefit from trade agreements which grow our jobs, exports and productive economy. The CPTPP, you can blame Canada for that acronym, gives us a significant opportunity as do future potential agreements with the EU, UK and others. We must give ourselves the resources that we need to achieve these deals and Budget 2018 will start rebuilding New Zealand's foreign affairs and trade capability. We must improve our country's ability to promote trade, have our voice heard on the international stage and be in a position to support our neighbours as the Pacific faces threats like climate change. That is about being a good citizen and about building and growing the economy of our region. The budget will also include the biggest investment in the regions of New Zealand seen in our lifetimes. The Provincial Growth Fund, agreed in the coalition agreement with New Zealand First, is investing in infrastructure and lifting the value of businesses in our regions. A core element of our shift to a more productive economy will be getting the investment signals right. That's the focus of the tax working group and indeed of the reform of our Reserve Bank Act. It's also why we're focusing on investing in infrastructure. We recently announced a refreshed and fully costed Auckland Transport Alignment Plan, which is a demonstration of what we can do as a government to lift New Zealand's productivity by leveraging our balance sheet and working with others.
The ATAP refresh is also a demonstration of how this government wants to work. We want to be collaborative. We're committed to developing strong partnerships with local government, business, iwi and workers to transform our economy. And you'll be hearing more about these types of partnerships in the coming weeks and months. We also want to measure our success differently. For Budget 2019, we will be using the Living Standards Framework developed by the Treasury to create New Zealand's first wellbeing budget. We want to look beyond the normal GDP measures to measures which show how what we do improves the health and wellbeing of our people, our environment and our communities. Because improving intergenerational wellbeing will drive our priorities and, measure, and how we measure our success. Perhaps the biggest shift to our economy is how we make ourselves more sustainable. A future-proofed economy is one that recognises the importance of protecting our natural resources and makes the shift to a lower carbon economy. This budget will make the investments to start that journey. This will include seizing the opportunity of new, clean technologies through a green investment fund as part of our confidence and supply agreement with the Green Party. We will also begin the process of a just transition to a more sustainable economy by responsibly looking now at the challenges New Zealand will face in the future. There's another element to sustainability that I want to talk about this morning, and that is fiscal sustainability. Because this government, like all others, has to be responsible to future generations for how we manage our finances, just as we do for how we look after the environment. There's been quite a lot of comment recently about our budget responsibility rules. Well, today I want to reassure you we are committed to them, as much as we are to the investments that we need to make to transform our economy. Both are possible and both are necessary. It goes without saying that a government that presides over high deficits, increasing debt or a shrinking economy will not be able to provide the critical and quality public services that New Zealanders want and deserve. That's why we developed and that's why we're committed to the budget responsibility rules. I'm sure you know them all off by heart, but in brief, we will deliver a sustainable operating surplus across an economic cycle. We will not generate artificial surpluses by underfunding essential areas such as health, education or infrastructure. We will just the, reduce the level of net core crown debt to 20% of GDP within five years of taking office. We've made this commitment to ensure that future generations of New Zealanders are in a position to be able to respond effectively to any shocks, natural or economic. And the government will prioritise investments to address the long-term financial and sustainability challenges facing New Zealand. We will also maintain government expenditure within the historical range of spending to GDP, which has averaged around 30% over the last 20 years. Lastly on these rules, we will ensure a progressive taxation system that's fair and balanced and promotes the long-term productivity of our economy. Our tax working group chaired by Sir Michael Cullen will be making their recommendations to us, um, the initial ones in September this year and the final ones in April next year. This review is not a revenue grab. In fact, one option open to the working group is that their recommendations are fiscally neutral. What it is, is a responsible review of New Zealand's tax system to ensure that it is appropriate for the 21st century and provides balance. Now we've been criticised by people who either argue that the rules, our budget responsibility rules are too tight, or on the other hand by those who, despite all evidence to the contrary, believe that Labour-led governments cannot carefully manage the government's books. Budget 2018 will show that we can meet both the rules and make the investments necessary to rebuild the foundations of our critical public services and start the transformation to a modern productive economy. That means that Budget 2018 will deliver a surplus. You'll see it there on Budget Day. It's what we promised and it's what we're delivering. It is a legitimate question to ask of any government, how will you pay for your commitments? Well, our plan to do so has been clear since the election campaign. First, we have slowed down the debt repayment track of the previous government by two years. This frees up resources that we can invest in infrastructure, housing and correcting the social deficits that are undermining our economy and our communities. These investments will generate a rate of return for the economy and the government in terms of greater capacity and productivity growth. Secondly, tax revenue has tracked higher than forecast in recent months because we do have a strong economy. 
This gives us more choices. It's important that we use this extra revenue wisely and carefully to meet previously unfunded cost pressures over the coming years, and some will be available for this budget, but it does need to be used over a period of time. Thirdly, we are increasing government revenue through initiatives that were clearly signalled during the election campaign and by building on work done by the previous government. With no offence to the accountants in the room, a person's ability to hire an expensive accountant to get them around their tax obligations should not define how much tax they pay. By investing in IRD's compliance capability, we will generate a greater return by ensuring that people who avoid their tax are caught and made to contribute, just like all the hard-working New Zealanders who pay tax out of every paycheck. We are also cracking down on property speculators by extending the bright line test on the sale of investment properties, and we are ensuring a level playing field uh, for taxpayers by ending the practice of negative gearing for those with an investment property portfolio. And we are also aggressively pursuing those foreign and multinational companies who do not pay their fair share of tax. You'll hear more later today from Revenue Minister Stuart Nash on how we will continue work initiated by the last government to make sure that there is a level playing field for New Zealand retailers in an increasingly competitive global market. And finally, it will also come as no surprise to you that this government has different priorities. It's only natural that some of the previous government's policies and schemes don't fit with our plans. They haven't stacked up as value for money, or some of them have simply not come to fruition. One of the first things I did as Minister of Finance was ask my ministerial colleagues to look through their budgets to find spending that could be better invested elsewhere. Within five months, we have been able to reprioritise $700 million of funding over the next four years. Combined with our moves to crack down on speculators, tax dodgers and ensuring multinationals pay their fair share, we have freed up $1.4 billion worth of funding for this government's priorities and investments over the next four years. Every responsible government should be reviewing policies and spending regularly to ensure taxpayers are getting the best value for money and that policies will benefit the greatest number of people. I have to say that one lesson I've drawn from my first budget process is that we all spend an awful lot of time debating new proposals, but comparatively little on the substantial baseline allocations. So that's why in the next phase of our reprioritised next exercise, I will work with ministers to take a further look at their allocations to ensure we're getting the best value for money from the investments the government makes on behalf of New Zealanders. Over the next few weeks and on budget day, every single investment that we announce is fully accounted for within the operating and capital allowances that are set with those budget responsibility rules in mind. Responsibility has two meanings in government. We must be fiscally responsible. We must ensure that New Zealand is well placed to handle any natural disasters or economic shocks. But governments also have the responsibility to prepare our country for making sure the foundations on which that future will be built are strong and sustainable. Budget 2018 begins an economic and social transformation that must happen if we are to deliver to New Zealanders an improved quality of life and better living standards for decades to come. This starts with making sure that people have access to the critical public services they need and deserve, health, education and housing. It means shifting the settings of our economy to face the rapidly changing world of work, to drive more productivity and to make the transition to a more sustainable economy, one that will last and withstand changes, challenges by turning them into opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, a budget is always a balancing act defined by the priorities of the government of the day. Our priorities are different to the previous government and we have been responsible by making sure that we've created the room for critical investments that we need to make while maintaining New Zealand's resilience to any future shocks that may hit us. We are investing in the future of our people, our economy and our environment. We are a transformational government which is managing the books responsibly so our economy is prepared for the future. I'm very much looking forward to Budget Day as this government's opportunity to set in place the plan to make some vital changes for a more productive, more sustainable and more inclusive economy. Thank you.